35 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett, it is the Ramble, and we go from now until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out to the other coast of the United States of America, far away from Harlem, New York, and talk to the blackest man in America, <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Hey, Larry. Well, you know, when I used to go on the road a lot back in the early 90s, uh, I'd get to a town like Tucson or something, and they'd pick me up at the airport, and then for some reason, they thought Larry Bubbles Brown, they thought I was going to be black. They were shocked. I don't know why. Yeah, well, uh, the name Bubbles, I guess? Yeah, for some reason, that... <laughs> that engenders a racial uh, uh, thing. I guess. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, but it did. Why would that be? I mean, do you know any black people named Bubbles? Uh, no, I don't. I think uh I think what it was was the Bubbles combined with brown. Not nah, that had to be it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would think it would be. Okay. okay. You know. Um uh, because I can't, I I just never ever once when I heard Larry Bowles Brown thought, <laughs> "Where's the black guy?" <laughs> the black guy. You know. So, uh, how you doing? Oh, uh, okay. It's getting uh, ready for the uh, time change. My worst time of the year, but yeah, yeah. I hate when they change the clocks. It just really annoys me. It, it, it does annoy you, yeah. Yeah, and they they've been talking about getting rid of it for fifty years, but they never will. When's the change? Uh, it's the first Saturday in November. First Saturday in November. Okay, so still got a couple of weeks before it changes. Yeah. Well, you know, we're just fooling ourselves. That's all we're doing. You know. Oh I, yeah, it's just. <laughs> I've often suggested that we not have uh, daylight saving time. But that we adjust uh, all the businesses, say, come to work an hour later or whatever, you know, yeah. and, and just adjust for it that way. Or get used to going to, you know, get used to the sun going down a little earlier, okay? Right. They say it was started for the farmers, and that may be well the case, but we have long since gone past that, Okay. So mm -hmm. it's it's really stupid. You remember the year? I think a couple of years when uh, we had it all year long. Yeah, because of the uh, of the energy shortage or whatever scam they were pulling. It, right. Yeah. So it happened all year long. So I'm going. This is just we're just living out a lie. We're going against nature. We're going against science here. You know. I mean, what, what 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 are we doing to ourselves? I I, I always thought it was kind of stupid. Yeah, you know? and it's proven that every the first few weeks when they change the clocks, there's a, an increase in accidents and heart attacks. Yeah, it's not easy. So I I, I agree with you, Larry. Let's do away with it. Let's not let's not go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, try to get a law change in this country. It's never easy. Well, for people who are technologically advanced like myself, it's not as big a problem as it used to be because most of the clocks change themselves in my house, except for the microwave and the oven. And what else do I have to change? There are a couple of clocks I have to change, too. So you have to go around changing the clocks, and there's always one you forget. Right. Is there is there one that you you like when they do when they go to daylight saving time that you say, say fuck it I'm not changing it? I don't change my I don't have a clock but I never change my watches so I just pretend I'm living on the old time. Oh really? Yeah. Son of a bitch, you really are. 
ornery. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I'm a rebel. <laughs> you're you're a rebel. Wow. That's terrific. We're doing this a little. We we record these things. People should know that. We record them in advance. We do two at a time so he doesn't have to talk to me every week, which would be disgusting. Uh, and um, uh, today I had to do it an hour earlier because I have a appointment with a chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to a chiropractor? No, and I've always heard two things. People either swear by them or they're total quacks, so I don't know what to believe. Well, I think they're quacks. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, but I've had this neuropathy, okay, which is a spine thing, okay? So I just figured, all, all right, I'll, I, I went to this guy once and I never went back. Um, you know, because I didn't. my feeling is if you go to a doctor, and you leave, and you don't feel that much better, okay, then don't go back to the doctor. Right. You know, it's just like somebody told me with, um, you know, somebody told me with a doctor. Uh, uh, years ago, I had a guy on the air who, who talked about, do- who was a doctor, and he talked about doctoring, and he said, if you don't feel better after the first visit, don't go back. You know, not that you have to feel 100% better, but appreciably better. Something it has been relieved a little bit. Then just uh-huh. don't go back. Otherwise, this doctor is just trying to get your money. You know, if he says, oh, come back and see me in a week. You know, come back and see me in a month. Uh, he's just out to get your money. You should feel better after the first visit. That's That was his take on the situation. I think he's right. And I think he's right. Yeah, absolutely. So my feeling is I'll go to this thing today and see if it helps with my neuropathy. And I'm not expecting miracles. I I just care that there's maybe just an unch difference, okay, but that I can feel that there's a perceptible difference. And if I get that feeling, then I will, uh, I'll, uh, um, you know, I'll go back to him. But if it doesn't, improve it then fuck them you know that's the way i feel about it because i'm you know i have a neurologist and i said to him, my wife wants me to go see a chiropractor about this and he said no nah, i wouldn't do that now i know that the natural enemy of the chiropractor is the doctor so uh most doctors are going to say don't go to the chiropractor well, what kind of training does a chiropractor have uh i think um uh, car mechanics <laughs> um, I think they went to, to you know, the, Jiffy uh, Lube. <laughs> they they were, went to auto shop in in high school, Jiffy Lube. Yeah, now, I don't know. You know, I mean, there are people who say that for certain things they can give relief. All right, um, and uh, so uh, since it's in my spine, I think that's causing this neuropathy. And that's what they supposedly do adjustments on. Uh, I'll take the chance and see if it works. You know, everybody on the program at night is going, have you gone to the chiropractor yet? You know, because they know how I hate chiropractors. And they want to know if I got any relief from it. And I said, no, it's tomorrow. You know, I'll let you know when it, when it happens. And um, I just, I, I'm, 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 I'm wary of the whole process. Um. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, uh, but I'm willing to give the guy a chance. But if I walk out and I don't feel any better, my feet are still kind of hurting a little bit, a lot, then uh, uh, I'm not going to go back and waste another $200 on this guy. 200 bucks, wow. See, also, also uh, insurance, most insurance doesn't, uh, doesn't take it. Uh, I think I'll get about six bucks back from Medicare. You know, they just, they don't like chiropractors either. Yeah. So, uh, and none of the insurance companies uh, will go along with chiropractic. So if if for years they have been reluctant to pay off chiropractors, what does that say about chiropractors? Exactly. You know. Um, so I have, you know, I have a big question in my mind as to whether this is... Uh, uh, gonna be we're gonna work okay well but, if it is a case of a, like a disc pressing down on something and they can 
release that, that uh, could work. I have uh, a, a narrowing of my of, of uh, my L four and L five, according to my doctor. You know, which could be pre- compressing a, a nerve and yeah. causing this to happen. You know, but uh, it's well, not. What does, he, what does the doctor say you should do? Uh, well, he had me do physical therapy, but that didn't work. Okay. Uh, I have some problem with the bottom of my feet, and it, it kind of it did help that because uh, he showed me some exercises to get rid of what he considered to be plantar fasciitis. Okay. But right now, that's not taking care of it either. So I've been taking this thing called Lyrica. Well, a form of it. It's the generic Lyrica. And you take it twice a day. And the problem with it is, it's made me loopy. Yeah, I uh, can't stand pills. Well, I mean, it made me loopy. And like when I'm doing my show at night, I don't know what button to push next. I have to think slowly. <laughs> you know, now maybe that will all go away as time goes by, but it does relieve it a bit, you know. So I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining that it doesn't work, but it just makes me incapable of doing physical action. I wouldn't want to drive on this stuff. You wouldn't want to see your airline pilot taking those. No, not at all. Or my stewardess, for that matter. <laughs> what is it? They're, they're cabin attendants now. Cabin attendant. I wouldn't want to see my cabin attendant taking it. Uh, here's your coffee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know. So, uh, anyway, it, I mean, it, the Lyrica works. Okay, I can't complain about it. But I, it just makes me loopy. I, I don't know if I can, you know, I try to, every night I've started the show and I've fucked it up. Mm-hmm. You know, I have either haven't had that volume up or I haven't had the, you know. So I'm doing, I'm taking steps to make the whole process simpler for myself, and, you know. Okay, well, there are people that do swear by chiropractors, so maybe it'll work. Yeah, and there are those that swear at chiropractors, so. That too. You know. I mean, I don't know if it's the medical profession that has poisoned us against chiropractic, um, but I just don't know that. I just don't know that it's a you know that it. I. I mean, there's some there's a problem with doctors too. I mean, I can't see that this neurologist has helped me a great deal. You know, right. I go in every six months and he pokes at my foot and says it's either better or worse. You know, and but then he gives me no. He gave me like this gabapentin as a pill, you know. And then I found out from my friend who has diabetic neuropathy that this Lyrica really helps him. But it's meant for diabetic neuropathy, not general neuropathy. But it seemed I asked my doctor, and so he prescribed it to me. And uh, I've been taking it twice a day. And um, it's, um, you know, I mean, it, it mildly helps the problem. But I, I I don't know. I just don't like being on medicine all the time, you know. And then I've got what I've got happening now. Um, that's that's kind of depressing me a lot. And I don't know if it's depressing you. Have you had a lot of people you know die lately? Uh, more and more. Yeah. When you get to be my age, it's a lot, a lot. You know, whether it's movie stars that have suddenly passed or a music person that passed, or a friend. Or a friend who's come down with some major physical problem. Like you and I have a friend, uh, a comedian, who just had a stroke. Yeah, Yeah. and uh, still waiting to see how that plays out. Uh, Yeah, you know, and, and especially a comedian. I mean, a stroke, a comedian has a stroke. You know what? What yeah, happens there? Your timing goes throw, gets thrown off because you have trouble speaking, uh, and uh, you know his, this person's left side is completely not working. Um, lots of therapy, lots of physical therapy. You know. Yeah, I think that takes a ton of therapy to come back. From yeah, that. yeah, uh, but you know, I mean, and and the toll it takes on your psyche must be terrible. I would think so. It'd be so depressing. And it's a person we all love and know. You yeah. Know? So. I mean, somebody very close to you, somebody right. very close to me, 
Uh, and uh, so it becomes doubly horrible because, hell, you know, we didn't expect that. You know. No, and it just uh, in it when you know what you want to do, but your body won't respond. That's got to be the worst. Well, the guy that we know is still a smoker, I think. That's you what know. I heard. Yeah. Yeah, and if he's still a smoker, if he, you know, if we got a call, he's got. I've got lung cancer. You'd go, okay, I understand it. You know, but stroke. You know. And then I think about it. I go, hey, you know, I could have a stroke at any moment because strokes don't have anything to do with working out or anything else, I don't think. They're bl blood clot in the brain. Blood clot or a, uh, or a, a, a vein in the brain that uh, breaks. Yeah, but the, the, I don't think there's anything uh, proactively that you can do to prevent it. You know? Uh, you can. They, I read that 60% of those are caused by high blood pressure. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. But then the other 40%, you know, you still have a, a pretty large chance of having a stroke with a, and being in perfectly yeah, good health. Have a, you could just have a weak vein or uh, just a clogged artery. Or I mean, you run, every, what, three times a day a week? Every other day. Every other day. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So about three times a week. Uh, every other day. So you, you're, in, you, you're in good heart health. I think. Yeah, you know? I should be. But I did start running because my cholesterol was bad, and I didn't want to go on medication. So. Oh, okay. Did it bring the cholesterol down? It uh, did, yeah. Okay, and did you uh, alter your eating habits? Uh, a little. I, I actually tried to alter that before I started running, and didn't, that didn't do anything, so... See, I take the I take the cholesterol pills because I don't. I I had a doctor once say to me that he said if I uh, if my son were if I were born today, uh, when he was of age, I would put him on statins. Uh yeah. Some people swear by the statins, and they do. I have tried them; they do knock the cholesterol way down. Now, yeah, and uh, 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 what was strange? I'll tell you what happened to me a while back is I got my, my yearly back, right? And my doctor writes, what happened to your fucking cholesterol? And it just went, it just shot up incredibly. And then I thought about it, and I went, every month I make out my pills by having one of these little pill boxes and putting a different pill in, in there, you know, whatever. And then every day I will upend the, the date on the thing and eat, eat all those pills. I didn't put in my cholesterol pills that month. And that was <laughs> that was enough to shoot it right up. That would do it, yeah. Okay, so the next, so he said, well, let's retake it and take the statins. Okay, so I took, retook the statins, and the next time he said, oh, your cholesterol's perfect. You know, that's how good those things are. Yeah, you know? they're supposed to be amazing. And I went on a uh, all, you know, I went on a meat and all low carbohydrate diet which in my case was almost no carbohydrate so i was eating a lot of meats and fats and chicken and you could have fish and you could have you know but it was not what a lot of people would say is a healthy diet and yet i said to them it's the healthiest diet i could possibly have i just lost uh, you know 50 pounds so i mean what's the difference between eating badly and losing weight <laughs> Or having the weight and eating right. Yeah. Is that the keto diet? <laughs> it's meat and eggs. Yeah, it's it basically it's what they call the keto diet. It, it it's low carbohydrate. I went on it years ago, uh, and then you know I gave up on it, stopped taking it, and I of course ballooned up to about one hundred and forty five, uh, two hundred and forty five pounds, and uh, I. Um, uh, I then, you know, uh, went and on the uh, the low carb diet this time, and lost. Uh, well, I lost almost sixty, and now I'm down to where I've lost about forty five or fifty. Okay, because I, you know, after a while you gain a little bit, and, and you're you, you keep an eye on it. And you're in good shape, um, but. Um, you know, I mean, I'm much better off at this lower weight. You know, that's a significant amount of weight taking off 45 to 50 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm in great, better shape this way. 
uh, although my neuropathy is bad and, you know, and I may have prostate cancer, but outside of that, I'm fine, you know. <laughs> At least you don't have a stroke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the prostate cancer thing I worry about, but my doctor said, don't even worry about it. And I said, well, why? He said, at your age, he said, it's, it's not going to be an aggressive one. And they can take care of it very nicely, and it's not, you know, it's not a big deal. They're not going to have to remove your prostate. Yeah, that's right what now. I thought. So yeah. I wouldn't worry about that. That's one you can scratch off a list. Well, I don't want. Uh, uh, yeah, like I'm the worrier. Do you think I'm going to scratch it off the list? <laughs> you know, I'm counting every day till the next uh, time I have to see my doctor. You know. Um, saying, well, this is going to be, I, I, when they say, well, the thing is on November 5th, right? And so if I hear that a new TV show is starting November 10th, I'll say, that's after I find out I've got cancer. <laughs> you know, that's the way I think, okay? That's a good way. <laughs> I'm crazy. We're always the optimist. I'm nuts, you know? Um, but, uh, so you don't see chiropractors. Uh, no. Do you regularly see doctors? I try to avoid them, but, uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't like going to doctors. But. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you have anything wrong with you? Yes, I need, uh, I need a cataract. I think I got a cataract, and uh, I need, I probably should get the hernia taken care of. But yeah, I have a hernia, I mean, and I have, I, I had two cataracts, and I got rid of both of them. Yeah, you said those are pretty easy. Oh, that's so simple. You know, it used to be that when people had cataract surgery, um, they um, they had to they they did it, and then they had to sleep on a block every night so they wouldn't move their head for like three yeah. months and Didn't things. Did they stick your head between sandbags or something? Yeah, or something like that. And then you then you uh, um, uh, for three months, and then you know, hopefully, it healed. Now it's just they go in. It, it's like I went into the he, the doctor had a oh I'm I'm uh, I'm operating on Tuesday so come here so I go to this place and it's like cataracts are us you know uh, I mean he just had them lined up and he was doing it took him about fifteen minutes for each one boom 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 and then he put a little <laughs> little cup on your eye which you keep there for a night so you don't you know fall on it or whatever. And then you go back the next morning, he takes a look, and he says, fine, keep using these drops for a week and come back and see me in three months. You know, so it's really very simple, you know. And, and it, did it, it make a dramatic improvement in your vision? Well, if you've got a cataract, you'd usually have like a blurry spot in the middle of your vision, and that goes away. Okay. You know, uh, and my other one wasn't that bad. Uh, but it, it was what he called getting ripe. So we better do something about it. Getting so, ripe. So I have two cater uh, two two lenses in here and I'm I'm fine. You know, it wasn't a problem at all. So you, you should really you, you know, if you get if you have to get it, it's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. Unless you go to Kaiser, in which case you probably die on the table. <laughs> uh, uh, you know. How many jokes have there been about Kaiser? Well, you, you certainly, you certainly, uh, you came up with the best one in which you described uh, uh, the uh, doctor at assisted suicide, or is it better known Kaiser? <laughs> yeah. Well, you go to Kaiser, right? I belong to Kaiser. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How much does that cost you? Well, I'm on the Medicare now, so it's uh, it's called an Advantage Plan. It's like ninety something a month. That's not bad. That's no. not bad at all. It's better than uh, uh, than uh, uh, ARP because that like comes out to two hundred a month. You know, you're talking about the supplemental. You know, everybody when you get Medicare, which a lot of you are not ready for yet. Uh, you'll find out it pays for eighty percent, so that you got to take care of that other twenty percent, and that's where the insurance companies jumped in like crazy, right? Coming up with all these plans for you and so on. But uh, hmm? it just the whole medical thing, just making everything goddamn complicated and expensive. Just 
Yeah. Because when you're when you're sick, that's what you need. You need to stress over bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's really what you need. Exactly, exactly. Hey, look, uh, time has a run out for Larry and Bubbles. Your, your chiropractor is warming up right now. Yeah, he's warming up. Oh. Uh, well, at least he doesn't have tools. He sticks in you. You know, <laughs> that's the good part. Anyway, thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. Talk to you next week. It sounds good. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there was Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. And so far tonight, I haven't made a big mistake. Except my earphones are not plugged. They're not scrunching in. The scrunchiness ear thing is not closing in, so I'm I'm getting somewhat of a tinny sound. Um, then we have to go find some more of these ear earbud thingies. Hi, how are you? What's happening? Uh, let me open up the phone line, see if anybody wants to talk to us tonight. Uh, well, let me see here. Where are we? And then I go, bum, and then I, come on. Yeah, active. Okay, so our lines are open now. There's no fill tonight, so it's a fill-free night, so feel free to call. Uh, and if we, don't, you know, if we don't get enough people, I can always sign off early. I can especially sign off early tonight because there was no Damien and there was no, uh, there's no um, uh, Jack Bishop tonight at, uh, you know, whenever. So uh, consequently, consequently, uh, we have no, I'm the only show on here tonight except for the franchise MC did do a sports show tonight. So we had the sports show, all right? So it's the sports show and me, and that's it. I'm the only the only show on this damn network, so uh, let me see. And there are only like a few people listening to me right now, so or watching me right now. Oh, we just got another one. Uh, I don't know. What am I going to do to get more people to, to listen to this thing? Maybe if I get a new host, it will probably do better, right? Okay. Mm. Mm. Coffee. Uh, anyway, I'm, so I'm waiting for a caller, and this is what we do. We just stall until... Oh, there we go. Here comes Charles Wallace, ladies and gentlemen, who is uh, always ladies usually the first guy to call. And, first guy to call. <laughs> uh, uh, he's here, and uh, let me push the uh, button here. Wait, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Come on. What, uh -oh. What happened? oh, I see. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I have a little stuff here that's kind of, I, well, that's not supposed to be. I'm, I hit three. And it, wait a minute. Let me go there and then let me hit three. There we go. That should work. And then we bring in Charlie Wallace on that. I had some kind of problem there, technically. Wasn't my fault, folks. I didn't screw up tonight. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Jeff Stein just tried to call, but he couldn't get in. Is that true? Okay. Well, we'll see. Well, anyway, there's uh, there's Charles Wallace. Let's see. Hi. What, yeah. How you doing, Charles? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn on the air. Oh God, I can't turn on the air conditioning. Girlfriend that did a thing where she put the curtains up here, and so they cover the air conditioner. And so if I if I turn on the air conditioner. Uh, the um, stuff is in front of it. Well, I guess I could get it to, yeah. Well, it'll just uh, blow the, uh, the, uh, the curtain aside. Okay, here comes Jeff. All right, okay. Let me see here, Jeff. Uh, let me see here. We got to get Jeff Stein in here. So we get Jeff uh, right here. Well, we ha can't see him yet. Okay. Are you there, Jeff? Jeff's having trouble getting on. Let me call Jeff back. Ah. Let me let me try calling Jeff back. Um, let me see here. Do, 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 Jeff, I'll call you back, Jeff. Let's see what happens. Okay, add. Okay, so it's calling Jeff Stein. Let's see what happens. Sometimes Jeff has a has a problem. <coughs> Hey, we're calling you, Jeff, if you're listening. Uh, Jeff, it says, is unavailable. Now, how was that? He was available. He, was, he called us, 
that was an availability in and of itself, wasn't it? Let's try adding them again and see what happens. Okay, calling Jeff Stein, calling Jeff Stein, it says here, <coughs> but apparently Jeff Stein, Jeff Stein not available. Yeah, well, anyway. So it's just you and me, Charles. Looks like it. Yeah, and if I if I you know don't get enough people, we'll we'll sign off at, uh, at on the hour. That will make this the shortest broadcasting day ever <laughs> for uh, Gabnet. Anyway. So come on, call guys. Yeah. So uh, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, uh, I had a busy day today. I couldn't believe it. I had the umpire, but I had to do all kinds of umpire stuff. So. What do you mean you had to do umpire stuff? <laughs> well, because I'm the treasurer, so I have to write paychecks. And this weekend is payroll weekend, so I've got to write a bunch of checks this weekend. So i got to get everything set up to do that. So why, why does that. It, why and does then it, I had to go pick up our money. Why does an umpire <laughs> have to write checks? Because that's how we pay the umpires. They get they get paid twenty two. There's twenty two dollars a game. Mm -hmm. They get usually have four games a night, and some guys work as much as three or four nights a week. And the way I pay them is, is, is I write them a check. So there are four games a night. So that's yep. eighty eight bucks there. Yep. Times four. So yeah, it can be a bunch. Yeah, you can make a little bit of money on it. How long? How long is each game? It's fifty-five minutes. Okay, so they're working four hours, basically. Yeah, for eighty-eight bucks. Yeah, I'm trying to think if that's a good deal. I think they should go on strike. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good for a part-time job. Yeah, I guess you know. I mean, what what they're trying to get minimum wage to go up to fifteen dollars an hour. That comes out to twenty two dollars an hour. Now, now so. you immediately came into got into uh, the uh, the umpiring thing again after moving yeah, back. Once I moved back here, yeah. Yeah, you, and you're in what Austin or Austin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back to Austin, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ostentatious, I used to call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and so, here. by the way, nice town, really nice town. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, San Antonio is pretty nice too. Yeah. yeah. Most of the big cities are here in Texas. Well, yeah. 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 Uh, they, uh, a lot of them are pretty new. Let me turn on the light back there. Otherwise girlfriend would get mad at me. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what happened to Jeff Stein. You know, he called. I'm going to try one more time here. Let's see what happens. Uh, add, it says calling Jeff Stein. And let's see if he answers. I doubt it. I don't know what his problem is. But would somebody else call so I can make sure it's nothing wrong with Skype? You know. I did have, I think I did have a new Skype this week. A new, Monday, a a new Skype? Ah, here comes Jeff. All right. All righty. Let's see here. Uh, but but I answer it and he doesn't he doesn't connect. Son of a bitch! Don't tell me that Skype is having a problem tonight. Um, let's see here. And I think Tim tried to call too, calling Jeff Stein. Oh wait a minute, what's this? Skype video group conversation? It's calling on my cell phone. Wow. Maybe Skype is all messed up. It could be Skype is all messed up. Well, I stop it already. I didn't even... Who's calling me? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay. okay. Who is, Who this? is this? It's That's me. me. See? See? Yeah. It, you called you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> here comes Jeff Stein. There we go now. Je there's Jeff. Okay. What, what kind of problem were you having, Jeff? Everything. I don't know. I couldn't get it. I kept bringing it up and bringing it up, and it never answered. It never answered? Yeah. Wow, because I did answer. I yeah. know, and I know you even tried to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't hear it. Yeah, son of a bitch. Well, I don't know. If somebody else will call, let's see if uh, they, they have a problem. But they should. I, I, I turned the whole computer off and reloaded it, too. Yeah, well, that could be. Did it work after that? 
we did yeah. after that. But yeah. I, think, I think it took the second hit. Yeah. There, wa- there is a new Skype this week, at least for PCs, not for Macs. I got Mac. Yeah, but there's a, a new one for uh, PCs. I know that because my, uh, my uh, PC uh, up- upgraded when I turned it on. Said, oh, there's a new Skype, but we're going to start it up for you. Anyway. So, anyway, we're going to see you this weekend, by the way. That's right. We're coming up to Connecticut. Yeah. First time I've been out of the city in, I don't know, five years. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, we're, and we're, uh, we're going up, uh, taking the train up. How long a train ride is it up to your place? Well, we kind of set it up for you to go about an hour. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we'll pick you up there. Yeah. Yeah, because we go up to, what, 125th Street and catch the train. Yeah. 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 This is a... We actually have train, a train that goes right through Harlem. It comes out of uh, out of Grand Central Station, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And um, uh, it's it's very nice. It's very nice. Uh, my my huh? grandmother used to have a house right around the street there. Right around where Grand Central Station is? No, in Harlem. Oh, in Harlem. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Harlem, uh, Harlem's gotten awfully gentrified, you know? Oh, yeah. It, it, except for our apartment house. The landlord here <laughs> likes to keep it as a, as a uh, slum, <laughs> you know? <laughs> a very expensive slum, albeit, because yeah. some people are paying like seven, dollars $8,000 a month rent in this apartment house. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's fun, though. It's very nice. Uh, I love Harlem. Uh, that's, I'm very proud at the beginning of the show now to have, say, is have it say live from Harlem in New York. <laughs> By the way, did you like my little animation that we have for uh, Rob? Did, did, yeah, I heard that. It, yeah, it did, you, did you see it, though? Yes. Yes. Okay. No, I haven't seen it. You yet. have to watch the program from the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could play it for the audience right now, and they'll see what I mean. But uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just play it and 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 show people what it is, uh, what I'm talking about, because I I worked on this and it made me feel real good. You know. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Where are we? I'm trying to remember which one it is. Here we go. Watch this, folks. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Looks like a Muppet, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Can you see it? Yeah. Are you watching it? Okay. I, I, I'm watching it now, yeah. I saw it before. I don't know yeah, why I'm not yeah, seeing it. Yeah. Looks kind of like a Muppet. <clears throat> I don't know. I do. But I, I, that was one. that's what I do with my weekends. Mm. Yeah. So, You're getting good at this. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm getting really good at it. No, actually, I'm getting terrible at it. I didn't take my drug today, my, uh, my uh, uh, mm. Lyrica, because what happened was yesterday when I went to push buttons here, I'm still having a problem. I, I kind of got mixed up. Which button do I push? I don't remember which button it is, you know, and things like that. And um, that shouldn't be. I, I should not be all goofed up like that. Um, but the drug does that to you. Now, I, I might enjoy it on the weekend, <laughs> okay, when I don't have to do anything, you know. But when I have to do stuff, I, it's, it's not easy. It was not easy. So I went to the uh, chiropractor today. Yeah, I heard you talking about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I was talking to uh, Bubbles about it before mm-hmm. I went to the chiropractor. But I went to him. Uh, you know, I am a great, uh, how can I call it, um, naysayer when it comes to chiropractic. Um, yeah, you're a believer in it, aren't you, Charlie? Um, yeah. Yeah. I've gone to them for years, and they've always helped me. Now, is that because you want them to help you and psychologically you feel better, or you actually feel better? I think I actually feel better because I was a skeptic like you before I went to chiropractic. Yeah. 
Well, he uh, he said to me, he said that uh, very rarely does uh, the numbness happen in both legs, but if it's up right in the upper part of the spine, he says, which is suspects it is, it then radiates into both legs, and that uh, he did some some manipulation, not much. I don't feel that much better at all, you know. I can't say I feel worse, but I don't feel better. Uh, uh, but he said. Uh, if you come back a couple times next week, we do a couple of days of this and see what happens. And I asked him, I asked him how much it cost, and he said one hundred and ten dollars. So I went, okay, you know, I like I, you know, for one hundred and ten bucks, uh, I'll uh, I'll 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 eat it, you know. So I get two days will cost me about what it cost me to go to Costco. <laughs> yeah, but you were saying that Medicare wouldn't cover. Medicare's always covered mine. Really. Yeah, I mean, how much? In fact, Blue Cross Blue Shield would cover it before I I reach sixty five. Really? The chiropractor has always paid for my my uh, my chiropractor visit. <coughs> oh. I mean, my uh, insurance company has always paid for my chiropractor visit. Oh. Hold on a second. Would you guys talk to each other? I just got to do something for a second. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's. Have you ever been to a chiropractor? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, okay. How did, yeah. how did that work out? Well, sometimes it's been, let's say, a temporary benefit. But Well, it's worked you know, out really well for me because I was in complete agony. I could hardly even stand up the first yeah. time I went to a chiropractor. And that's why I went because things got so bad. I was on these heavy drugs. <laughs> I was all spaced out. To each other? And I went to the chiropractor and he yeah. snapped my back and the pain was gone. It was instantly uh, went from agony to zero pain. Really? Yeah. You went to agony to zero pain. I just want to make sure I got my, my cards back here. Ah, yes, I did. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I got my Medicare card. and Okay, I got it back. I got the stuff back. Okay. Oh, that's good. All right. In I just, fact, now that I have a Medicare Advantage, it pays 100%. I haven't had to pay a dime for my chiropractic visits. Really? Since I turned 65. Son of a bitch. Well, I mean, uh, maybe maybe Marjorie doesn't, uh, they don't pay for Marjorie's a lot. But anyway, I just want to make sure that I had my, uh, that I got back my my card and stuff. Oh, there's Patrick. Let me put him into the, uh, hey, to the fold Patrick. here. Uh, because... Uh, uh, there, here we go. Um, 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 uh, Darth Pat. There we go. And then What's he up? should pop right up. There we go, folks. See him? Look at it. Look at him. Isn't he adorable? He's hey. smiling because Aaron Rodgers did it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me, I, I would credit more to kicker Mason Crosby. Huh? Yeah, but Rodgers got him in position to kick oh, it. Yeah, but I mean that. It, that was good play calling at the end to sit instead of taking that touchdown. And so, yeah. yeah. It, Wait it a minute. I leave for two minutes and you turn it into a sports show. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. A heck of a game. What, what game are you talking about? The uh, Lions Packers game. The Fudge Packers? Yeah, Monday night. Was the Sunday night or Monday night? I can't remember. The Fudge Packers. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. Let me see if this... this I have I'm, no idea who the uh, two commentators were. Uh, hmm. You rarely ever see them for Monday night. Yeah. Burger and... I uh, can't remember I the other. I don't know who that guy was. So I, I, I was surprised. I figured they'd get... At least somebody more well known for a Monday night game, but whatever, it didn't matter. Patrick, can you still go see a, a game uh, outside of the regular Excuse me, guys, city? I'm looking for my ear, for an ear thing because that one is going, is getting soft. Let me I like see the second half of what they you are. said, Jeff. Can you go Here see a are. Milwaukee? Oh, yeah, they, um... Uh, hold on. Just keep talking to each other. They, they don't they play... Keep talking Miami sports. Me, let me keep Miami for another year. Um, <laughs> New stadium. Let me see here. Okay. They don't play, this. Uh, 
and then I will put the new one on and let's see here if yeah. this thing stays in better there your we go. voices are going in and out oh there we go no my voice isn't going is your, their voice is fine Patrick was uh, oh okay. now Jeff now it's on better go ahead okay um we there's no longer a football game that played in Milwaukee mm -hmm. okay the new stadium but people who live in the Milwaukee area that are season ticket holders there are I think two games that they get priority over oh. Green Bay ticket holder or the rest of the state to make up for not being able to see a game in Milwaukee and then um, if it playoff tickets I think they get Gibbs on like the first one, you know, and then it, it kind of rotates, I think, between uh, however many games they be playing. So, mm -hmm. um, so Milwaukee still gets some uh, some ability to see them, but not in the convenience of just mm -hmm. you know, close by. Did you ever go to a game? No, I've been to Lambeau Field, but I've never been to a game. Um, just it never looked comfortable for me sitting on. It's all bleachers in mm -hmm. uh, Green Bay, so there there's no real seats. It, but wait a minute, they don't have like handicapped, uh, or let me put it this way, handicapable areas. Well, <laughs> yeah, they do. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really up for a 90 minute drive to Green Bay in winter weather yeah. <laughs> outside for a game in possibly snow, sleet, whatever, mm -hmm. and then drive home 90 minutes yeah. in that same shitty weather. So if I were to go see a game, it'd probably be like a preseason game in August. You know, um, mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah, it's just too damn cold and yeah. too miserable. Wait a minute. I got somebody here. Hold on a second. Bill, um, not supposed he's to be not here. here. Yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to be here. This is supposed to it be. It was here. only seven prints tonight. It's supposed I, to be. I, it's I supposed got... to women. It's supposed to be a fill-free night. Yeah, Phil. Well, wait so a minute. I lied. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Wait I, a minute. That's the wrong. Away. I pushed the I'll wrong play button. With my dog. See what happens? I pushed the wrong button. See what happened, folks? That's from <laughs> that fucking drug I'm taking. Go ahead. Hey, what? <laughs> I, I was listening on the way back from the photo thing, mm -hmm. and uh, you had said that you uh, had gone to the chiropractor, and then you excused yourself from the room, and I didn't hear well, anything. I wanted to make sure that she gave me back my uh, Medicare card and my, <laughs> my insurance card. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, what happened uh, after the session or during the session? Uh, did they do anything to well, you? The, was it just an the, exam? The, the guy blew me. Oh, okay. And, and that, <laughs> Did that you seemed, come? That seemed to, yeah, that seemed to ease the tension. No, yeah. uh, I, uh, you know, I went and he, he started uh, checking me out to see what was wrong, what was not wrong, and asking me questions and pushing and prodding. And then he did a little manipulation and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he came to the determination that usually he says with neuropathy, with uh, neuropathy, it doesn't happen in both legs. Uh, but if it's in the... This up up around the spine area, he said it can. He said that's mm -hmm. why he suspects that's where it is. Yeah. Okay. And that he thinks it probably needs uh, work, you know. Uh, 30 sessions? Oh, three maybe, times a week? <laughs> actually, you know, the thing is that I asked Holy. him how much the sessions were. Uh, how much were they? Uh, they're going to be uh, 110 bucks a piece. I think he only that's does it. He only does about a half hour, but you know. That's what I pay for my rolfer, and it's also what I pay for my chiropractor. Really? Okay. Yeah. And how many minutes do you get out of your chiropractor for one hundred and ten dollars? Depends. Uh, you know, he he. I don't want to hear about your underwear. I want to hear <laughs> about how much yeah, it cost you. It, it's not a you know the chiropractor part is not a massage, uh, so he he adjusts, and it just depends on how much adjustment I need. What he does is he measures my hips and my leg length and, and so forth. And, and then uh, the next week up. you come back for a suit, right? 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, zoot suit. And uh, so anyway, uh, you know, once he sees whether I'm in alignment or not, he knows what he has to do. And if I have any particular uh, issues, for instance, uh, last week I fell uh, uh, in, a, in, in someone's office. Yeah. Uh, I slipped. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my hips were out a little bit, and he, he adjusted me, and I feel better. And Friday, I see the Rolfer, and I'll feel even better. By the way, I heard today, I was talking to Bubbles off the air. We mm -hmm. didn't talk about this on the air. And he said, well, you know, we were talking about people we know who have health problems or are dying or have died or whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because I brought, him, uh, brought up to him the Will Durr situation, and he said, mm -hmm. well, did you hear what happened to Mike Dugan? And Mike Dugan was a con. Well, I don't know Mike Dugan. I don't know Mike Dugan that well either, but I do know yeah. the name, and I do know he was playing around San Francisco as a comic. Um, he was never one of the A players, let me put it that yeah. way. Okay. Uh, I never hired him. And I said, well, what happened to him? He says he has uh, stage four prostate cancer. Wow. Yeah. And so I said, he didn't realize he had an issue I, I, at stage well, one? Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Huh. He said, he's, 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 I said, how did that happen? You know, he said, well, he went and got a prostate exam and, an, and a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a PSA test. Right. And his PSA was 29. Wow. Yeah. And the doctor never called him. Wow. And that was a year ago. Did the doctor die? The do no. The doctor <laughs> never called him. Wow. So they killed him. Basically, so, basically he's killed him because if, if they had done something about it right then, he might be in better, yeah. better shape now. You yeah. know? I'd be filing a, a lawsuit. Yeah. Well, that's I fine. I think that's the last thing. That, he's that's fine. If, that's about. fine if you've got a family, but if you don't have a family, what good is it going to do you? Have any family? Okay. I don't know that he does or he doesn't, but my case He's a it, comic. What kind of family can he have? Hmm? <laughs> He's a comic. Ah. They don't have any family. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, I uh, oh, this air conditioning isn't helping. Uh, let me turn it off. It's also making the lights flicker, and that drives me nuts. Anyway, uh, so, I mean, there's a case of just, you know, mm -hmm. doctors not doing what they're supposed to do. In the case of chiropractic, I just don't know if it's real, Okay. You know, uh, for all... it, it helps. I mean, gravity yeah. takes its toll on everybody. No, but I mean, it helps. But does does your psychological state of mind after you just put out 110 <clears throat> bucks to get, uh, you know, a chiropractic, uh, does that does that make you want to believe that you're better? Um, the, the Charlie is, was talking about that he was he had coverage for it. Don't yeah. you have coverage, Alex? Yes, but I don't. Oh, so... I, I didn't think they covered chiropractors. Uh, well, you ought to check it out. Medi yeah, check Medi it out. Medicare yeah. does cover chiropractors? Medicare uh, does in, in Texas and Arizona. Well, Medicare is the same everywhere. It's a national. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Uh, I never thought about it. You know, no, uh, was, I, I got rear-ended. You got rear-ended by a chiropractor? No, I got rear-ended last week going to raise, uh, mm -hmm. to a couple weeks ago, going to raise play. Mm -hmm. And uh, so their insurance company is going to pay for about $4,000 worth of chiropractic uh, because, you know, I, I paid thousands to get, you know, stuff straight. And then they hit me. So I'm going to continue to, to go on their dime. Well, I'm looking it up now. Let's see here. Is it covered by Medicare? Uh, showing results. I never got a Medicare. bill. It says, um, okay, wait a minute. Oh, you, the only chiropractic service cover. covered by Medicare is manual manipulation of the spine to correct sub, uh, uh, subluxation. subluxation. What's subluxation? Yeah. Subluxation is, uh, you know, the 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 uh, vertebrae move closer to each other due to uh, gravity. Oh, well, that's what I've got. Pressure. That's what I've got. Put pressure. Yeah, well, that's, that's what, what I've got. got. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I told this, you last night. This is night, covered by Medicare Part no. B. In instances where medically necessary and provided by a chiropractor or other qualified provider. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll get some money back. 
Could be. Yeah. And maybe your secondary also pays. Well, they so will. They, they if if Medicare pays, they will pay. That's right. that's their. That's what I'm saying. So I didn't pay anything. It's a hundred percent cover every visit. Well, in which I case I'll go twenty times last which, year. In which case I'll go to them five days a week. You know, I mean, what the hell? Uh, when I was married and I was covered under my ex-wife's insurance, mm -hmm. uh, we got like twenty-five visits a oh. year. Mm -hmm. uh, under Kaiser, uh, I got a you know, don't go, otherwise you'll pay for it yourself. <laughs> you know, but I went anyway. Yeah, you know. yeah. No. Well, we started talking about the medicine and the, the numbers went down. See? Man, fuck you. If you don't want to talk about it. I'm an old man. I got to talk about this shit, okay? <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Nobody has respect for old people. Yeah. You know? And nobody wants to hear from old people. I'm going to start a uh, podcast called uh, uh, Nobody Wants to Hear What Old People Have to Say. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Nobody wants to hear what anybody has to say. You know, it's it, it, we live in a world where people just want to talk and they don't want to listen. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, your moron of a president had a great had a great statement yesterday. Oh, which, which one? Uh, about um, uh, everybody says uh, that blah blah blah. I can't remember what the thing was. Everybody says blah blah blah, and even some other people. Okay. <laughs> I, even, somebody told me he said something. There's a lot of sand there. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of sand there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but I mean this whole thing about uh, it was it was something like um, to the extent of you know everybody believes blah 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 and even some other people. Works for me. I, I'd like to yeah I'd, I'd like to know what that is and also with this uh, this woman who uh, was driving on the wrong side of the road. Uh, which one was that? In England. I, I, oh, she, oh, she was an American. Ah. And, the, and then, then she left before they could get to her. And she yeah. used diplomatic immunity to get herself out of the country. Oh, they hit a motorcyclist or yeah. something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's doing this whole thing about, well, I, you know, I know what it's like to drive in that country and to drive on the other side of the road. It's very confusing. Uh, and, I've done, and I've done the same thing. Yeah. He said, "I've done the same thing. You hit a motorcyclist and then I left us. No, nah, he drove it. on the same on the wrong side of the road. No, but that's mm -hmm. not what he said. He said I've yeah. done the same thing. Yeah, you're reaching. The guy's an idiot. He's a moron. Yeah. I don't think he thinks that much about you either. Well, I'm, I, <laughs> I, I don't think he knows who the fuck I am. So I'm not going to get audited anyway. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, this you, this guy is." I saw this press conference today, these two press conferences he did, and they were just, they were hilarious, okay? The, the guy who works for me is not a Trump fan, my, my uh, operations manager. Yeah. And he said uh, Trump had a meltdown today. I, I didn't hear any of it. I was too busy. Uh, and he had a meltdown he, with Pelosi. Said, yeah, with Pelosi. Yeah, and he said that uh, he said something in front of Pence and that Pence got you know, very uh, uptight about it. I don't remember. I think Trump is losing his mind. Not that well, he that's, probably that's what, hasn't... That's what my friend said. ...hasn't lost his mind before. But, I mean, you know, even if you hate Nancy Pelosi, <clears throat> you're holding a meeting and you're discussing, for instance, what's going on in Turkey and so on and so forth, you don't say... Start calling her names right then and there. You know, this is not diplomatic diplomacy. He's certainly different than diplomatic most. diplomacy. Isn't that a? Did I say something twice <laughs> there? Diplomatic. It, it, whatever. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I I don't know. Uh, you know, it it, it it's uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of scary what what this guy is all about. He's a moron. Well, you know, he's from Queens. Yeah. Got anything to so say about I, that, Tony? Yes, uh, Tony. We're talking about Trump. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me what let me get Tony in here. Uh, let me see here. Transition. There we go. Tony comes up. Okay. There we go. What did he say now, Trump? Oh, it, I, it, it, you, you don't want to know. You good know. thing he watched the news today. He admitted. He admitted to killing somebody on a motorcycle. 
<laughs> and on uh, Fifth Avenue. And and he said, uh, you know, everybody says this, and even some other people. <laughs> he said. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And then, <laughs> then he yelled. Crazy. He yelled at Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer in a meeting. Yelled at him, just, but not stuff that was like you. You don't know what you're talking about in this particular case. You know, it wasn't like a heated discussion about something. It was just he started saying, "You're, you're, you're incompetent, Nancy Pelosi." I think, I think they're all you, fucked you up, and I will tell you why. Why? Uh, they had a, a tape of Biden during the uh, uh, during the uh, uh, debate last night, what and this and what was happening was is that he was go- jumping all over and, and stringing all sorts of different things together, and he and he wasn't uh, his sentences weren't cohesive, and uh, you know he'd start talking about one thing. Don't and worry he, about him; he's lost <laughs> this already. Oh yeah, but you know, uh, he's lost the nomination. I think that there may be something in the water in Washington that does well, this. Well, I'll tell you something about about uh, that debate last night. I didn't watch it. I watched <laughs> moments of it. And all I thought was, I'm glad I didn't watch it because I would have gotten mad. Because if I were these people, I would not uh, involve myself in these debates. And I'll tell you why. It in- encourages you to be adversarial against your own kind. Right. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and that looks very bad. Did yeah. you see the poll on Drudge last night as to who won the the, the debate? I think won. first was was Tulsi Gabbard, and mm-hmm. second was Andrew Yang, and third was Che Guevara. So you know who knows about that poll? <laughs> well, no, no, it, it was just it was interesting because I voted that I thought Yang won, but uh, I didn't hear the whole thing. Uh, and then uh, you know when I you look at the results, it said number one was uh, <clears throat> Tulsi Gabbard. Really? Well, I mean, that doesn't mean anything. That's, that's Drudge's people, you know, They're his fans. Mm. Uh, I, I don't even go over to the Drudge report. So, you know, I have no idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I would never participate in that poll as an example. But all I know. Of course know- you would. No, I would. Don't wouldn't. you want to see the results? You can't see oh, the yeah, results. Oh, yeah, you have to do that in order to see the but results. It's skewed, yeah. though. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, the point is, um, um, I just think it's bad for the Democrats to involve themselves in these, to begin with, unsanctioned debates. It's not like these are the debates put on by the League of Women, League Voters, of Women Voters or some mm-hmm. official organization. Yeah. This is CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times. Mm-hmm. And these are all, it's like there have never been this many debates. And every time you debate your own kind, you're going to have to eat your own, and that doesn't look good. And what you're yeah. doing is you're giving fodder for the enemy. <clears throat> like if you say, well, you're Biden, you're blah, 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 and you did this and that and all the other thing, and now you're trying to fight him in a Democratic debate, the Republicans are going to take that yeah. statement and use it against Biden and yeah. if he gets nominated. What, what they said on Fox today was that instead of having uh, these debates, you let the public decide, and you have uh, you know the state uh, uh, what are primaries, and either they win the primaries or they don't win the primaries. You don't get rid of people because they didn't have a good night on TV, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's. So what they were saying is basically what you were saying, that uh, the debates is, are not a good way of determining yeah, yeah. who should be in right. the uh, Wait a minute. Something, race. something just hit me. What's that? Look at Tony's yeah. room. Oh, oh <laughs> is he it's, it's Halloween. They didn't take, oh, oh, is it they oh. didn't take down last year's Christmas uh, decorations? <laughs> just a uh, light on. Big pumpkin in the back too. To yeah. yeah, but those are Christmas lights, aren't they? Yeah, uh, they're probably orange, but they look red. Yeah. Uh, when Tony comes back, let's give him a bad time about this. <laughs> All right. I was gonna ask about that pumpkin because it looked like you made it in like fifth grade or something. He probably did. <laughs> yeah. In fact, Tony is just in fifth grade now, so you know. Yeah. You got, a, you got a problem with that? I got my social security card in the mail today. All right. 
It's the first time I've had one since 1966. Yeah, what happens is you lose your your Social Security (laughs) card, but nobody ever asked to see it. So you just memorize the number. And after a while, in fact, you know, if you have one long enough, they they look like paper mache. You know, they're just all Mm dog-eared and terrible. And why the government doesn't give you a Social Security card that's plastic? Uh, Now... uh, there's a place to put my signature. It, does it say that I can't uh, laminate it? They don't uh, want you to laminate it, but Marjorie always laminates hers. Uh, you laminate I'm, yours I'm, too, Patrick? I'm, I have mine laminated and it in pristine condition in a drawer somewhere. And I had to, I had to bring it out for, I forget what it was, a couple of months ago. Somebody needed to see it. And it took me the better part of, a, of an afternoon to find it because <laughs> I, didn't, I, I had it with my birth certificate and a few other documents that nobody ever asked for, you know. And mm-hmm. um, so when I found it, I was surprised to see that it was laminated. Then I remembered I laminated it like back in high school or something like that. So. Yes, so it's uh, geared and, and torn apart. So uh, I read the front and the back, and there's nothing on here about not laminating. Okay. Okay. Now we got to ask Tony. Tony. Tony, you didn't yeah. you didn't take your Christmas lights down from last year? No, actually, I decorated <laughs> Halloween all over the house. My mother wanted me to do it. You see, I like that whole thing in the front window. I bought some stuff to. Like a trick or treat, a haunted house that lights up. Living in your house must be a living hell. Well, you know what happened? Alex? We used to we, we used to put stuff in the front of the house that blew up, but somebody slashed it. I had an inflatable pumpkin, and they cut a hole in it. The animals had to come out and destroy it, the kids. So now I can't put nothing in the house because they slashed this freaking pumpkin on us. I it's guess whatever the Republicans, the Trump did it. Room. No, my mother like we like the decorations. The front is oh, really. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's really true. <laughs> uh, Usually those decorations go outside the house, Tony. I know. She wanted them over here. I don't know why we have to have them here, but we have to have everything lit up. I said, all right, I'll put a set over well, here. He, well, he, he has to do what his mother says because he works for her. Exactly. Yeah, She's the boss. Yes, yes. <laughs> Patrick. Tony, yeah. behind you, that big pumpkin. Oh, right here. Is that something that is handmade? Like from my her? my niece is an artist. Well, she's trying to be an artist. She made that. She actually paints really good. I don't want to brag. How old is she? Right, Ma, go to bed. Already. I gave her two times no p.m. She's still up. Hey, All right, uh, Ma, I'll come in a second. Will you? George, yeah, she made uh, that. <laughs> how old is your niece? She's uh, fifteen. But she's really she, she's a good painter. I got to tell you. Uh, I don't want to brag, but if I show you some of her artwork, you'd be amazed. Well, I'd be amazed after seeing that pump. She's down. I don't know where she gets it from, but she's really good. Wow. Hold on. Let me see what she wants. i got to give her a tissue now. Hold on already. Will you? (laughs) (laughs) I love this show, man. I'm telling you, you can't beat comedy like that, right? No. (laughs) You know? This this 50-year-old man being beaten up by his mother. Oh, God. I had to give her a tissue and say goodnight. Holy shit. Tomorrow was going to be scrambled eggs with sausage. We got on breakfast already. Oh. And I got to have the sausage out because she's got to have it with it. Oh, God. And the eggs can't be runny. Alex, go off a bit. The egg drips. We can't eat it. I mean, come on already, will you? Well, I can make non-drippy eggs. It's pretty easy. I can't because I kind of do it Here's faster. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's How what is the secret? Do. Because sometimes I crack it and it you drips. You cook them in a pan, and if you have a uh-huh. cover for the pan, you put the cover on the pan. Oh, that's, that's called from, a basted egg. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, that's the my way brother, I eat my eggs. Way, I always anything. do that. Either oh. that or I will do... Um, you gotta uh, put a little it, water in the pan too before you, uh, and then cover it. And well, yeah, uh, I usually hold the basted no, you egg. Use it butter. cooks over use the top. Butter. Oh, okay. Use butter. Use use, uh, use as much butter as you possibly can because it'll make her die faster. Oh no! I can't. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She's so healthy right now. It's scary. Hold on a second. I got. I got to go over here and fix this curtain, which Marjorie keeps moving, so that I can get some air. Is that the iron curtain? <laughs> 
Tony. Yeah. Um, okay, so you got the decoration behind you. You got mm -hmm. the decoration in the front window. Yes. Where are the towers? Like in the bedroom too, or yeah, just you know, see actually my, just my the front windows? We got some nice big size windows. You wearing the pants tonight? And, and our the apartment gap, downstairs, I have windows. I have lights that light up. Phil? I can change it. They're seasonal. Oh, you give candy. Candy. One Phil. Yeah. Phil, are you wearing the gabnet pants tonight? I'm wearing real pants. Oh, really? Uh, oh. Yeah, it was no no change out. Oh, I see. Okay, because I you know I always wear my gabnet pants. Yeah, uh, these are Dockers. Yeah. Do I still look skinny? Huh? Uh, what? You you look like Alex. Oh. Yeah, Corey, you, you look a lot skinnier than you used to. Oh yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't look fat, do I? No. 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 Mm -hmm. You don't look anywhere near fat. Oh, okay, good. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I appreciate yeah, I don't look that. Look fat at all. Uh, by the way, we miss uh, Kathleen. She hasn't been here the last couple of nights because she got some family concerns. But, uh, oh. yeah, oh. you know, it'll, life goes on, you know, little yeah. things like that. And I told her, well, call, you know, it becomes a catharsis when you do the show, you know. But it's, uh, you know. Um, she has some older, is she, I, she, I, she has older parents, right? Hmm. Uh, and uh, I asked her today, how old your mother? And she said, 79. Oh, like my mother. And I went, you know, when I went up to see them, I mean, no wonder they called me sir. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know. There's polite old people. Yeah, no, but I mean, his mother was the same age as I was. Her mother was the same age I was. Well, you know, there's something about attitude and, uh, you know, that you don't seem old. I True. know people that are in their 60s and they're ready for the grave, and you know, I know. I, and you know, one of the people that compete at the at the show, she's 97. Oh. She nice. drives. She climbs stairs and ladders. She's amazing. She's 97. Mm -hmm. uh, she, I, on Saturday, I was on a uh, the four people, and she was one of them. We were photographing the uh, Blue Angels. And we were on a Coast Guard cutter uh, that moved around mm -hmm. between uh, Pier 39 uh, and along the shore. Yeah. Uh, so she was right on the boat. She says, you mean it doesn't anchor? I, no, this one moves. She says, okay. And, uh, you know, she's taking pictures. And 97. God bless. Oh, that's good. That's good. Happy to hear that. Uh <laughs> You know. Yeah, we should live so long and yeah. and so healthily. You know, I, uh, you know, I have this great fear of death, but I'll probably die tomorrow. Anyway, yes, yes, Patrick. Patrick, tell us hand up. <laughs> did, Phil, did, did you mention about climbing the ladder to make me feel bad? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, climb a ladder. Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, you can get somebody <laughs> to carry you, uh, you know. Uh, no, she, it's amazing that it was a ladder that I had problems with, and she's 97, and she's running up the ladder. You know, uh, at, that, and last year she was on the same shoot. Uh, you know, yeah, amazing. You know, some people just have genes that uh, you know en enable that. Yeah, uh, my mother when she was 100 looked uh, 110. Yeah. You know, so it was just, yeah, yeah. Uh, In, yeah. Whatever, but, you know. Well, I mean, you know, uh, somebody like I talk about my friend Jack Garfine, who mm -hmm. has been going through some medical problems and so on, and he looks very old. He looks he's 80, 88, and, uh, or 87, maybe 88. And he has a, his best friend who was in a concentration camp with him, and they are approximately the same age. This guy looks 10, 15 years younger. Yeah, you know, there's no telling. People age at a different rate. Everybody ages at a different rate. And and uh, you know, whatever happened to him, even though they were in the same camp, uh, you know, maybe some things catch up with you from your youth. You yeah. know, and uh, I, my friend Michael, his father was a camp survivor, and uh, I think he's ninety and you know, looks, he's you know totally normal. And, you know, with no no maladies. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, I mean, it, it it's, um, you know, people age at a different rate. 
I mean, I yeah. remember going to uh, Ronnie's, uh, I don't know, like 30th or 40th high school reunion, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And I went with her. And uh, all these people were there. And they're all within a polar range of each other in yeah. age. Sure. Okay, if you have a center they're pole, probably- they're probably like three or four months one way or three or four months the other way. Yeah. Everybody looked different. Wow. You, know, you couldn't so you tell. Can, Some look. people looked like they were 10 years older. Others looked 10 years younger. I mean, Some of them smoke, sudden, you know, uh, smoke their diet. Uh, you know, look, I take a lot of pills. I got diabetes. I got high blood pressure. I take pills for all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to see 90. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to see 80. But, uh, yeah. you know, well, it's, I, I it, hope I hope you do, Phil. I appreciate that. I hope, it's, well, uh, I'm just saying that because I need, you, you need a call. I need, I need somebody to come to my. <laughs> I need somebody to come to my funeral. Uh, I just heard. I just heard they fired another guy over at Sirius XM who's been there a long time. Oh, who got Keen? Pete Dominic. I don't know who that is. Um, a lot of a, you. You never. Did you hear Pete Dominic, Charlie? Well, you don't have Sirius XM, do you? No, no, I don't know who he was. I canceled it when they fired you. So did I. Um, yeah, no, uh, Pete Dominic got fired, uh, which I don't care. I never liked Pete Dominic anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it was just it's just another guy they got rid of who probably they shouldn't have gotten rid of because he was right up their alley doing their kind of stuff. And I think it was just he's been there so long, he cost them too much money. Yeah. You know? And uh, so he, I think he was on the progress uh, on the lefty station. I can't remember what station he was on. But anyway, goodbye, people. That must have been what sixties on six. No, 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 no. He did talk <laughs> show. Did a talk I, no, show. I'm kidding. Oh. The lefties, you know, the progressive sixties. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that should be called left wing music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sixties on six. So, Did they, didn't you say they also fired the other guy, make it plain or something? Yeah, Mark Thompson. Yeah, uh, so he's I, gone too. Matsumela Mafume. Matsumela Matsu, Matsu, Mafume, yeah. or as I like to call him, Matsumil Mafume. Which is a, <laughs> I was all confused by that name. It's I like said, I said, thrown in. I said, it's Matsumil? What are you, Jewish? You know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's one of the lost tribe of Ethiopia, you know. It's like the thirteenth tribe. Yeah, so he he's now doing a podcast, and um, 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 did they buy name? him lunch? Pete, when Dom- he left? Pete Dominic is doing a podcast. Yeah, did any of these happens. guys get lunch when what? they left? No, you, know, you said they were going to buy you lunch. Oh no, they were uh, going to buy me lunch a couple of weeks after I left. Like, give us a right. call because we'd like to have lunch with you. Okay, yeah. and I'm thinking to myself, well, either they want to have lunch with me so they get a free lunch. Yeah. Don't pick, don't pick up the bill. <laughs> I would. Or they really want to think. talk to me about something, so it excited me. Oh, that is right? true. Yeah. To this day, they have never. I I wrote them once. I said I'm ready for that lunch now, and they <gasps> said, "Well, it's uh, times are busy right now. We'll get back to you." And I've oh, been that. thinking about writing a letter. It was like um, the program director over there. I was thinking of writing Send them them a the letter bill and for saying, the lunch and, and, and all it was going to read was. Don't bother waiting. Don't bother getting uh, asking me for lunch. I already had it. <laughs> well, you know what you can do. Well, Just say for lunch and send them a bill. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is yeah. say sorry you missed it. It was great. <laughs> this is the lunch we should have had. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. Uh, so did this? No, I was gonna. No, I was gonna say Dominic. don't add, let, forget about the lunch I've eaten already. That's what I was gonna write. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there was a Seinfeld episode uh, with a suit and a dinner. And uh, it oh, oh, sounds yeah, very yeah. Uh, He goes to Mendy's, the best pea soup. Mendy's, the yeah. best pea soup ever, Jerry. Best pea soup ever. Best pea soup, yeah. That Mendy's is in uh, Rockefeller Center. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, they always on Seinfeld use the name of real places. I mean, the, uh, the soup Nazi existed. Yeah. But I, I thought soup, according to Seinfeld, is not a meal, or according to the, what's his name? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Soup is not a dinner. Ac- it's not according a meal. to uh, Banya, was yeah. the guy's name. <laughs> he was crazy. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, he, uh, he said, well, soup is not a meal, Jerry. 
you know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. uh, um, uh, uh, the, the uh, Soup Nazi episode was written by Spike uh, Fierstein, uh, who worked on the staff at the, uh, at the Letterman show at one time. Oh, really? And then during, <laughs> then during uh, breaks for, you know, um, lunch and whatever, they would go around to, around the corner for the best soup in New York. Uh, at at the, uh, I can't remember what the name of the thing was called, the Soup Kitchen or something like that. Who's calling? Who's, who's, who's out here? Is this, uh, who, Doug. who is it? Your, your, your worst nightmare, but anyway, I just want to talk to you right quick before you hang up on me. Yeah. yeah well, the, the, the series started going downhill when they got rid of you and then John, you know, got John saying down from three hours to two hours. And now they got rid of Pete Dominic. Well, John Fugel slang, slang, but John Fl Fugel, John Flu Fugel slag or whatever his name is, is a fucking asshole. <laughs> he's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. I can see why he can rub people off like that. No, anyway, no, he came, out, well. he came. He came on my. He came on day. my show on election night to supposedly do. They they said, would you have him come on and do some. Some of some of the um, uh, talking about it and so on. He's a comedian, and I said, "Oh, okay." And he came on. He didn't do fucking shit. He sabotaged my show. He was a piece of shit, that asshole. Stop he's talking about Doug that comedian. way. Anyway, he, he's a, he's a, okay. Well, 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 thank you for putting your two cents worth in, Doug. We appreciate it. Bye. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know. Mention. Doug wrote uh, the other day on Facebook that he had been thrown off uh, a few other talk shows, both pr uh, right and left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, it's not so much because I don't like Doug. It's that I can't stand him. <laughs> so, uh, it, you know, that's the reason why. So. He's, he's actually he's a good person. Yeah, sure. He is. Yeah, he's a good person. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, coming around. Yeah. I, 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 so was Hitler, you know. <laughs> Every now and well, then he would go lighter on the Jews, you know. I mean, I still can't believe they didn't kill him. Who? Who Hitler? I wish they would have took him out. That was a good movie. Remember they said they almost got him, right? Did they almost get him before? Well, no. There was, was a uh, there was a plot against him. It was a plot, yeah. Yeah, and they blew up a, a railroad car, okay. and Hitler uh, it was a railroad car. Or, yeah, or railroad a car. Well, it was a railroad car that was being used as a tactical room. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was not on the. It was not rolling stock at the moment. You know, yeah. and Hitler was there looking at all things. This guy came along and put a suitcase right next to him. And it went off, and it uh, Hitler. It supposedly Hitler. Uh, it hurt his arm terribly. Mm, it's a fucking joke. But, yeah, but it didn't kill him. I know this guy it like the luck of the Irish. And he was uh, the guy who, who was the head of the plot. This was, that was the Tom Cruise movie. Yeah, I like that movie. What, so that is that is true. Then I like that. It's a they true story. Close. It's an absolutely true story. Yeah, I just yeah. don't believe Tom Cruise is a Hitler. In no. fact, I don't believe Tom Cruise is a straight guy in a movie. You know, so... I he's mean, always playing himself. Yeah. yeah. No, he's, he's never playing himself. Otherwise, he'd be sucking dick on screen. Anyway, thank you. I'll be here all week. Uh, oh, yeah, I can get sued now by Tom Cruise. He, he has a tendency to go after people who say... So. Isn't he a public figure? Yes, but he can still sue. But, you yeah. know... What I'm gonna, what I would say, my defense would be, what's so bad about sucking dick? You know, I mean, yeah. I like getting my dick sucked. You know, and and, and uh, 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 it's not the, you know, it's, it's sucking dick by a guy, not, not anything wrong with it. You know, right? right? Yeah, right? it sure is. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I'll accept. Not that uh, there's the anything that wrong with gay it. Gay people have all the rights of straight people, but I don't accept the lifestyle. Uh, I, I I say that the lifestyle is the lifestyle of having sex and being in love with other people of the same gender, and love is love and sex is sex, and it doesn't matter who you have right. it well, with. Well, I don't force I, people to be straight uh, or accept my straightness. Why should I be forced to accept? 
someone's I, gayness. You know, I don't, I don't like the term straight. I'm getting to the point where I, I'm bothered so, by the term straight. Uh, oh, um, uh, what's he, the other term? Hetero, Homo heterosexual. Sapien. Heterosexual. Yeah. Yeah, a Homo sapien. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but a, a heterosexual. Uh, but to say straight, I mean, what's straight? Well, you know, I'm straight and narrow, you know. Yeah, well, if the whole world were gay, then we would be unusual, right? Yeah. If Trump came out and said, you know, it's because they want to they want to label everybody. That's really I think that's what you're saying. And I think it's wrong. Yeah. Well, because that's yeah, it is. Because if you get labeled, that can really affect you in a lot of different well, ways. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, straight people, uh, their their rights, they don't have rights anymore. Oh, it's only have. rights of the of uh, minority groups. So you know what it is. It's it's not the rights of the majority. It's the rights of the no, minority. No, but the, 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 the straights have uh, have already had rights. You know, they haven't had to fight for their rights. They and have. Alex, them. that's Alex. That's a stupid thing, Phil just said. Because if you if you fill out a job, what Phil said something it, stupid. You think about it. If you fill out a job application, Phil, they when don't... have you ever filled out a job application? Well, I mean, well, I'm just saying, but if you do fill out an application, right, they don't ask you what your uh, sexual preference is. So they don't They're know... are not allowed to. So then what you just said is totally null and void. No, it's not, because it has nothing to do with a job application. What, I was, talking about, what I was talking about is that I am having other people's rights... Force, fostered, uh, fostered on me, rather, um, you know, rather than just being able to, to live the way I want to live. You know, at that debate, uh, you had a bunch of people uh, that are white uh, saying that it's bad to be white, basically, because uh, you know it's it's the white people's fault that they did everything. Uh, you know, I, I I just don't agree with. Uh, I'm not going to take rights away from anybody. If you're gay and you want to vote and you want to get married and you want to do all those things, fine. But, you know, I, I feel as if I'm being pushed uh, by like the gay community. Huh? Are yeah. You uh, huh? Do I feel what? Do you feel like you're discriminated against because you're white now? Yes. He's, In he's, he's discriminated against because he's Phil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. But, you know, yeah, you know, now if, if you're white and you say anything, you're immediately told, well, you don't know what it's like to be this or that or the other thing. Well, we really don't you know, know what it is to feel to be, say, black. Well, it's, it's probably very close to what it's like to be Jewish. You know, and uh, and, and and there was there's been a lot of uh, a lot of backlash against Jews even in Europe right now you've got uh, a ton of discrimination and uh, and and in this country uh, you know anti-semitism and I know that in uh, Arabs are Semites too but you know anti Jewish anti-semitism is on the rise you know all over the you know world why? You, you because know why? they hate us yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah and, and with good reason so anyway no, I, uh, no. <laughs> Uh, so you know, it, you know, can uh, do I go near a lot of people that are anti-Semitic? No, I stay. I'm smart enough to stay away from them. But uh, well, you know, bad, yeah. Well, but there's there's yeah. plenty of it out there. No, of course there's. A well, you're gonna have bad people in the world. You never, you know, yeah. you're never gonna live in a perfect yeah. world. You know, you Charlie's know. been very quiet. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is there a reason why you why is quiet, that? Charlie? Well, I just don't want to get angry and get my blood pressure all up. Oh, no, wait a minute. Go ahead. Get mad. Yeah. I got get a mad. pill for that. That's what we don't <laughs> like about We don't want to have a what, 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 what made you mad? Yeah. Yeah. What? Nobody's forcing anybody's rights on anybody. Everybody should have the same rights. That's all we're saying. Everybody should have the same rights. They should. They should, That's except in, in the Bay Area, San Francisco, there's a lot of active, active uh, activists that are uh, uh, pushing the gay agenda on uh, everyone else. I it's mean, not a matter of pushing. What is the gay I agenda? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The gay agenda. Well, yeah. what, they're, what they do is they say they're gay, 
and yeah. they put it in your face and they want you to accept it. Well, they, uh, yeah, they, I think oh. I, I think that you should learn to accept it, Phil. Uh, yes, He's Patrick. Still uncomfortable, Phil. Yes, Patrick. I don't have to. Patrick, I don't have to react to it at all. Patrick's got his hand up. Okay, let, let the Patrick talk. It's Patrick talk time. Go ahead, Patrick. Can I be the weirdo and, and say something? Sure, go ahead. I had a friend of mine that I used to work with mm -hmm. explain to me about mm -hmm. gay lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's not a lifestyle any more than being black is a lifestyle. <sighs> Spanish is a lifestyle. He said, you're born that way. You may not discover that you're gay until, you know, puberty or even after that. And you, you know, you have sex, you know, if you're a guy with a woman and you realize, he said, it's not a choice. He said, it's not a choice any more than a black person right. chosen to be black. And he said, and this is what really got me. He said, think about this. Why did you choose a lifestyle? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. You're being... You're being uh, discriminated against, where your family ostracizes you, mm -hmm. where you are... You could be killed. Um, yeah. You know, and he, and he said, so why would somebody choose... He said, black did not choose to be black, and yet they were slaved and, and they abused and gone through all of that. So why would somebody who was white decide to become gay so that they could face... Yeah, why, why should I have to accept the black lifestyle? Yeah. You, you know... I mean, when you say you don't uh, like rappers, when you say when you say the uh, the uh, the uh, lifestyle of of gays, what happened to Ray's camera? Right, he's right. Old, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's trying to be fancy there. Yeah, uh, 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 the um, uh, when you turn talk about it, you're absolutely right, Patrick. I mean, using the term "gay lifestyle," it's not a lifestyle. It, it, it is a, 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 a sexuality. That's it, plain and simple. You know, it's not something they accept and said, oh, you know, I want that lifestyle. That'll be a fun lifestyle. You know. it, and, and for me, I mean, I would raise, assuming and even through high school, I, I, I had gay friends in high school or mm -hmm. acquaintances. We didn't really hang out, but we knew, you know, I mean, I'm gay. Okay, well, whatever. Are you? At that, <laughs> he's happy. Um, but even at that time, I didn't. I never thought about it too much. And then I went to college, and then the idea of a lifestyle was introduced to me. And so then I just assumed that it was a choice. But then, like I said, when I would when I was told. Why would somebody who's, you know, middle class or upper class white choose to, a lifestyle that could ruin everything that they have with their family, with their friends, with their job? I mean, they not the, with your job, but no, they, they got the best of all worlds. They don't have to listen to women bitch at them. They they dress nice. They got plenty of money, two incomes. They go to the best shows. They they got the best clothes. Come on. You know, they got a pretty good deal. Yeah, but you know what? You got to take it up the ass. Well, not <laughs> all of them do. You, know, you could be, a, what is it, a top or a bottom? Well, uh, and then you yeah. have to put it up somebody's ass. Either way, uh, it's the ass thing that stopped me. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, 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 all bets were off like at that point. It's kind of like just having them check out your prostate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I don't think it's a lifestyle. I think it, it's not even a life choice. It is, it is something that you inwardly feel and is, is your sexuality. So what about these guys that are I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna bisexual make, I'm, uh, no, I'm gonna, and that they'll they'll I'm, go either I'm, way? Well, they're is that they're, a choice? they're very lucky. They can you yeah. know they they yeah, don't, but they it, don't it, have it, to wait until two o'clock at a bar. Right? Yeah. Is that a choice though? 
Uh, well, well, I uh, don't no. think that's a choice either. No, uh, so because not, so no. you, you know you can go for a guy you can go for a girl so therefore are you one way or the other no you're either way and I think that that's a choice no, it's I a matter I of convenience I don't think it is not a choice Phil it's not it a is choice not a no. choice it's, and scientifically it's been proven it's not a choice it is a it is something that you acquire uh, and nobody really knows where it comes from. But you just Is it, it's hereditary, no? Is it well, a genetic? Well, I, I think it, in many ways it's an aesthetic choice. Yes, Ray, and then Patrick. Well, it's a there's they did a twin study where they had okay. had identical twins who were uh, brought up in separate families who were uh, homo who and they and over like seventy percent of the time they were, if they were gay they were both gay, mm -hmm. and. Um, so yes, there's nature and nurture, but it's overwhelmingly uh, nature. I mean, and they did it with a whole—I don't know how many twins, but there were a lot. It was yeah. a pretty exhaustive study. Patrick, the only place I think um, there is a choice is in prison. Uh, yes, and 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 I don't mean everybody, but I I would say. Uh, a lot of, I mean, I, I think, let me put it this way. I, 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 you know, guys, you know, we're guys here, but lacking any women in our environment. Right. And only guys. We'd probably still all. Still use the hand. We, we, no, but we, it, it, but, it, but you, I think you would have a tendency to be gay. There are people who are gay. No, I'd learn Wait how to fight. There, there, there are people who are gay in prison, and when they come out, they never. That is a good point. Yeah, never a gay again. Prison, yeah. yeah. Now, is there a gay gene? So, for instance, you know, yeah, they, they, they can look uh, at your well, genes knew, and uh, they can determine. It, it, there was it, a, wait a minute. There was a Gene it, Smith it, I knew. No, it, it was gay. It, they can determine if you're going to get Alzheimer's. They can determine, yeah. uh, you know, no, a lot no, of things no, no. with, with genes. It's you know, not looking genetic. at the genes. It's is not there genetic. a gay gene? It's not genetic. No. No. Yeah, so it's a choice. Yes, it is. No, it's not a choice. Partly no. it is. I Phil, think it's wait a minute, let me ask you a How question. Can it be I just told you about the twin Wait a minute, let me ask a question, Phil. Is <laughs> yeah. your heterosexuality a choice? Or how did you not come by more, it? How did you uh, come? How did no... you, well, for, forget about now. I'm talking about <laughs> then. <laughs> did you, you know, uh, uh, did you at some point have a choice and decide that yeah. you were going to be, I, uh, that you were going to be. When I first be... moved to San Francisco, mm -hmm. I met a bunch of people and I, you know, I, I was going to some parties and somebody singled me aside and he says, you know, uh, if you get involved in that lifestyle, it's a difficult lifestyle when you get older and so forth. It was an older guy and he, you know, was being like a Dutch uncle. And so uh, he, he, he basically, it's a choice. Phil, that's you not what choose. I'm saying. No, no, Phil. What's a Dutch Phil, uncle? Phil, Phil. I chose not to, but uh, no, no, you no, 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 no. But they was fun. There at some point parties. where somebody asks you, do you mind having some homosexual sex? And you go, no, and you make that choice. I'm talking about that you came to heterosexuality in yeah. any other way, but that it just came to you. No, naturally. but heterosexuality is supposedly it, it natural it, and normal. It, no, uh, it, through, no, it's through not, years. no, it is not natural and normal. You know what's nah. natural and normal? No. Getting like horny. More natural than Getting horny and wanting. To, am I right, Charlie? It's it's having uh, yeah. sex is normal. It doesn't matter with who. What is kind of abnormal is being uh, being uh, non-sexual. So what was the deal, you know, in, in Rome where uh, the Roman Empire was falling and, and part of the issue was uh, no, they, homosexuality? No, that wasn't the no. issue at all. It fell for an, enti for an entirely different set of reasons. But all the right. thing was that in Rome, uh, they didn't make that distinction. You know, they just, sex was sex. If it made your pee pee feel good, it made your pee pee feel good. Yes, Patrick. Wasn't Tony Curtis in that movie? You know. I mean, there, yeah. There, yeah. There, there are tribes that have been, you know, uh, uh, Native American tribes that recognize that homosexuality is just there. There's like four um, ways that you can be. One is straight. One is one is homosexual. One is bisexual, and then um, something else. And they just, it's been part of their culture forever. And, and I, I, I guess archaeologists have found this out 
in various writings and that. So it's natural for them. It's natural for, I guess, our species. Mm. I'm not homosexual. I've never had any desire. I've never found men attractive on any level. Um, but I'm speaking for me. And, you know, I... It's not something that I would choose, and I and I think the guy to talk to you, Phil, if possible, because of during that time, and like I said, even this was pre-AIDS. Yeah, but this this even me, like I said in college, and that went back in the nineties. It was still referred to as a lifestyle. Right. I I think that that thinking of that gentleman telling you, you know, it's a hard lifestyle, that people still were stuck on the term lifestyle yeah. and not accepting. That's a good point, yeah. Well, in this is early 70s, and there was very little acceptance of gay people. There was a movement in San Francisco to, uh, to, to uh, push that lifestyle. Yeah, well, the point, I mean, is, that, the point is, Phil... I don't any kind, any it, kind of sexuality is natural. It's a natural human function. Uh, <clears throat> the fact is that some people are gay, some people are straight. But as long as you're sexual, you're blessed with. Uh, with well, uh, and come, let me let me let me let me let me proffer yeah. this idea, uh, and I put this across at times that hey, homosexuality is entirely natural because it's within the range of human sexuality. Instead of thinking of uh, the graph, let's say, of on um, one side is normal and one side is homosexuality, what if that graph has a center pole on it and you go from gay to homosexuality and there's it's it's a spectrum as opposed to uh, an e either or kind of situation? And then I had a theory that nature decided that in order to keep from overpopulating this planet, some people would be gay just by nature, and that when populations became large, okay, when they became uh, overpopulated, that there tended, would tend to be more gay people because it, the nature is not going to deprive you of your sexuality. It's just going to drive you towards a non-procreative Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Does that make sense, Ray? Yeah, because... In yes, I, I even heard a theory where um, it was evolutionarily uh, advantageous to have some homosexuals in a tribe because they would help take care of the children. <clears throat> um, uh, and that's one of the Well, they didn't the pick theories. out their clothes? Yeah, right. <laughs> their, their, their skins, their bear skins and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and also... Um, uh, what was I? What was I going to say? Okay, I mean, I'll mention the twin study again. I mean, this is huge. So you have identical twins separated at birth in separate families. Yeah. Uh, over seventy percent of the time, they were both gay. If one was gay, so uh, that can't be chance. Yeah. So. But how many uh, people were in that study? There were a lot. I mean, I'll look it up. Well, you can't have a lot of twins, but I mean, you're saying that no, the, there were a, the, the twins two. raised separately. Both became gay. Uh, yes. Identical or fraternal? Identical. Yeah. Twin study. Here we go. Mm. Charlie, yeah. scream, make America great again, and Alex will call on you. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, know <laughs> why, you know why I can't see him? It's because he is now... He's in the bubble? He's, he's, he's in the bubble, and uh, I can't bubble. see the bubble, and I should be looking at my screen here. Well, why don't here. you put me in a bubble, because I'll always get in. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I should. And, and I should. Charlie I should do spot. that. I'm putting uh, Charlie in your in your in your space. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yes, Charlie's got his hand up. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Don't you know? I just was going to give uh, Phil an analogy. Somebody could have said to me back in the '60s, "Hey, you know, being black is a tough lifestyle." <laughs> <laughs> not if not if you're. Uh, I did, uh, I did not that? want to be black. Would that make me any less black? Well, you know something? A Here's a point. very good example. Just like I can't say to you, Charlie, hey, if you don't like it, become white. Right? Yeah. You know, because uh, no matter how uh, hard uh, you uh, try, singer did. And no matter how uh, hard you try, let me finish, yeah. Phil. No matter how hard you try, you will never 
be white. I've, I hope you don't feel bad about that, but it's true, okay? Uh, uh, the same thing holds true for somebody who's gay. No matter how hard they try, they will always be gay because that is the way they're... That's the way they're built. They're built. Charlie, yeah. if you were Shaft, you'd be, you know... I mean, <laughs> mother, shut your mouth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shaft was the coolest. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. a mean mother. Shut your mouth. Yeah. It was like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So where were we? So uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know. I, I mean, gave it's you just, some stimulation. It's just that. You Did know, you ever find the twin study, Ray? Yeah. There's a whole bunch of it on here. There's some other ones that say it's not. Uh, I don't know. The thing is, the thing is, that what's the difference? I mean, whatever the reason happens to be, like you, you, Alex, you were talking about. There's a continuum. Who was it, Kinsey or Masters well, and Johnson? A, you can't I think, think they you, both. You looked, can't they, think of sexuality they both did studies as, on this, and people are on a continuum. Uh, some people are totally gay. Some people are totally well, straight. Well, Most people fall in the middle somewhere, whether yeah. they're conscious of it or not. And I could tell you from playing sports. Well, you in can't think college, what I've heard, what I've heard said is you can't think of sexuality as a, a graph in which you have heterosexuality over here and being gay over here. Uh, yeah, right. Over here, what, what you've got to yeah. think of it as is a spectrum in which yeah. you've got gay over here, homosexuality over here, and then in that spectrum you have people that fall within that spectrum, uh, and that all of that is natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a matter of which way you lean, you know, or how much you lean that way. There's some people, you know, who are gay who go out and can have some straight sex and enjoy it, you know, yeah. and there are some straights that go out and have gay sex. That doesn't necessarily make them gay. You know, it just makes them sexual. I have like a, a second cousin who, you know, years ago in the 50s got married and had kids and he was extremely and totally gay, you know, but he didn't. He couldn't deal with that, and um, he was just he made miserable. No, yeah, he made a choice, and then he got divorced, and then he, uh, and you now he's a, he was much happier after that. Yeah, yeah his choice was uh, hell. He made a choice for hell because uh, he was not he was not straight in any way. <clears throat> Most uh, divorcees are happier to be divorced than. Uh, well, no, no, that's <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Yeah, well, my point my point is is that he was totally gay. And uh, but it wasn't something in the Catholic Church that was OK. And he didn't, you know, he didn't understand himself. Yeah. So. But I mean, it, it's just that we, we we can't think of being gay as as anything as, as that there's we can't apply a norm to sexuality. OK, it's unfair to do it and it's wrong to do it. There is yeah. no there is no normal in sexuality. The only uh, uh, abnormal sexuality is being uh, non-sexual, uh, lacking any desire to go either way or to have sex. I'd say that is probably abnormal. Uh, Why would that be abnormal? I, I think that's abnormal because uh, uh, most people do have a sexual drive. And some Depends of it is, on what age they but, are. But why do we always give a bad time to those people who have non-procreative sex? You know, they're doing us a great service. They're not cluttering yeah. the planet with other people. That is true. Phil should be happy about that. Yeah, you should be delighted. Phil. Support you know, Phil, so you ever had your you ever had your your dick sucked? Me? No. Oh, I have. Yeah. Well, I have. from women. No, I have from guy. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. know you said it once. Yeah, and I the only thing that turned me off was the stubble. You know, it just didn't uh, didn't the chafing didn't it uh, didn't work mm -hmm. didn't work for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can sit here and tell you all, I am I am not gay, and I know it. So, But you so don't know you, it, Phil. You don't know it until you get blown. So oh. if you were with a woman that had Bush, you would be turned off? <laughs> Depends which which Bush <laughs> it is. Face, <laughs> you know, I've had some women that had Bush that were, that was pretty stiff, you know. Yeah, yeah, a Brillo pad. Uh, yes, Brillo pad, uh, yeah. yes, uh, Patrick. <clears throat> she was blonde. I can guarantee yes, you true. I'm not gay, and I've never had my dick sucked by a guy, and I know I'm not gay mm -hmm. because, you know, Ray brought up being in sports. I can tell you just being in a men's locker room in high school and in college, 
I have had, I mean, you see Dick, you, you're not looking for him, but you see him. I have never had any thoughts of, you know, I wonder what, it's just not me. Oh, I'm, wait a minute here. You, you've you never been in a urinal and kind of looked over and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of men look over at me yeah. when I'm ca putting a calf in and urinal. <laughs> And then they regret looking over. <laughs> you say you want to help me out here? Yes, Look Ray. I can't see myself. It's weird. Um, you know, I was going to say, like, in high school, you can definitely tell the ones who are, like, in the middle, yeah. you know. Uh, they may end up getting married someday and being fine, but you can definitely see who. Because in high school, especially, like once they let their guard down, there's a lot of butt slapping and dick grabbing and stuff by the yeah. guys who are falling in the middle somewhere. And I was always like, get that shit away from me. You know, it's like I I had no <clears throat> desire to screw around like that, but there were a few well, who did. You, you know? know, all I'm saying to Phil uh, is if, if, if I had you blindfolded and then we started having some people suck your dick, you probably couldn't tell which one was a man and which one was a female, <laughs> except that the ones the the ones you really probably I, I were doing it really well were the guys. Well, the men, you know, yeah, I, I yeah, that's what I was going to say. But I'm saying that you know, you know I, I think that when it comes to uh, certain things, I mean, I, I you know, I, if you started taking it up the butt, I'd say, okay, you're making a, a conscious like, decision you know, there. But a blowjob, you don't know who's giving you a blow. I didn't know who was giving me the blowjob, to tell you the truth. And then I looked down, and it was a guy. And I sure. said, well, as long as it's happening, I may as well see what the experience is. And I found I didn't find it pleasurable once I knew it was a guy. And also, I could feel the stubble. You know, you know yeah. Alex, that might I mean, be a way to get old spice. What? Have, you, you might be able to get more viewers that way if you like have a, like a build up for for that episode. Like mm -hmm. one in three weeks, Phil's going to have his dick sucked by a mystery person <laughs> live on Cabinet. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. It, it, that's not going to be. They'll a big... throw that off of YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And, and <laughs> since Facebook. and since the prostate thing with him, it's not. Oh. Yeah. Know. It's a it's All a right. non plus. You know. Well, then somebody else then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony. Yeah. But, it's Tony's uh, turn. Uh, the, the only thing, yeah, yes, uh, Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. So everybody's talking about gay men mm -hmm. yeah. as compared to gay, gay women. women. Yeah. And uh, I guess I I have experience wow. um, being younger with mm -hmm. gay men. And then I, I knew them like nephew and whatever right right and and it became more um more well known okay mm -hmm. maybe when i was 15 i didn't know anybody existed like that right but things happen okay but then much longer uh all of a sudden gay women became uh mm -hmm. Became in my world, okay? And at the same time, I think men have a real good understanding about what gay men are like and what how you have relationships with them. Right. And how you talk to them and, and what they might say or not say. And and it's kind of a, I would think for most of it, it's a no-brainer issue. Yeah. I, okay. I, 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 I but think, as far as yeah. gay women, I think it's a little bit of um, they're not as um, obvious. Well, you know, and plus we all like we all also like girl on girl sex. You know, it's a whole different. <laughs> you know, you game. look at Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. that's pretty obvious. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. I just wonder how she ever gets laid, even by women. But you know, did you see uh, uh, Ellen DeGeneres? What she's hanging around with? That that woman's gorgeous. Oh, of the, course. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Ellen yeah. DeGeneres' uh, uh, wife. Portia de Rossi. Yeah. She, yeah. Yeah. From uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, <coughs> um, uh, uh, what was the show? What was that show? Uh, uh, oh, I forget the name of it. Anyway, I, you? Huh? No, no. It Me was, and my mother watch Ellen. Every the one day. with uh, um, Jason. Bateman. 
Um, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it on Netflix? Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't think of uh, it. Yeah. Great show. Oh, well, we're all, is... we're all fucked. Anyway. So Arrested Development. Arrested, Arrested Development. Development. That's it. Yeah, she was on that show. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, that's it. Uh, there's no uh, Jack Bishop next, so I can, we could go forever here if we wanted huh? to. I'm sure you want to. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I, I, I'm tired now. Got to go to sleep. You know, got a dental appointment tomorrow. Uh, gonna have my teeth cleaned and a uh, a filling. So you know, it, it's gonna be and a I, big day for me. Anyway, no, uh, don't ruin your adjustment. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, thank you all for having joined us. I uh, would like to thank Charlie mm-hmm. Wallace, of course, uh, who's lost no all feeling to his arm. Uh, let's see here. Then there's of course the uh, lovely and attractive uh, 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 Patrick. Patrick. Well, I know Patrick. I always have trouble with, uh, you know, the guy with a mother. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, you know. know yeah. Huh? The Tylenol PM's kicked in. The Tylenol PM. Tony Magno, ladies and gentlemen. Also, thank you to Jeff. Uh, thank you to uh, Phil very much for uh, having dumped your photo club tonight to come be with us. Uh, and uh, of course, Patrick, we love having and of course, you here. Ray. And, and Ray, 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 Ray. Thank you. Everybody, give us a big wave goodbye so they can all say goodbye to you. Yeah. Mm, goodbye, guys. There we go. There they go. Okay, that's our, uh, that's our panel for tonight. Let me turn off the uh, Skype and uh, I'd get it ready for the next show, but the next show isn't going to be on here. So we'll run last night's show of uh, the uh, the intersection. Uh, in the meantime, I'll see you back again tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin returns to his program at 9.30 uh, Eastern Daylight Time. I'll be on at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Well, that's not what we wanted at all. We want that. No, we don't want that. What do we want? We want that. See, I knew I'd do something right or wrong here. Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>